Did you know that what's happening in your gut could actually be linked to developing Parkinson's disease? What are you talking about? You may or may not have heard, but recent research has actually shown that gut bacteria, also known as the microbiome, may play a key role in development of PD and even in potentially in treatment. That's what we're going to be talking about in today's episode of the Parkinson's Disease Education Podcast right here on YouTube and everywhere where podcasts are found. Thank you for being here. In this episode, you may or may not want to trust your gut. We'll soon find out. Catch you on the other side of the introduction in three, two, one. Welcome to the Parkinson's Disease Education Show, where we demystify the disease and empower you as the person with Parkinson's disease to reach your true potential. The content contained on this show is for informational purposes only and is not meant to be a replacement for information or advice that you receive from your in-person medical or therapy professionals. If you haven't already, I hope you'll consider subscribing and for an even more personalized experience, please ask us about our memberships. Now, without further ado, let's start the show. So if you're wondering if this is true, it is true. Recent scientific studies have shown that there is a direct link between Parkinson's disease and the gut health of those individuals. Imbalances in the gut microbiome are also known by a term called dysbiosis or dysbiosis, however you want to pronounce that. Why is this important and what does it have to do with Parkinson's disease? Well, the answer isn't terribly complicated but I'll try to make it as simple as possible anyway. Dysbiosis or imbalance of the gut microbiome can actually lead to a condition called leaky gut. Leaky gut, or the medical term uh, intestinal permeability, can actually lead to increased inflammation and also can lead to increased oxidative stress. I hope the term oxidative stress piqued your interest a little bit because we've talked about that a lot in recent episodes of the podcast, especially the last several months, where we've linked the damage to mitochondria from oxidative stress to the damage that is in cell death that's caused in the brain in the substantia nigra pars compacta or the striatal cells in the brain. Those are the ones producing the most dopamine naturally, and those are the ones that are damaged and dying in Parkinson's disease. So we've also talked about the domino effect that that can have in other body systems as well. And another player, a key player in this, is also going to be alpha-synuclein, which we'll talk about briefly. I'm not going to talk a whole lot more about alpha-synuclein in this video. You can go to a previous video. I'm going to link up above on the right-hand side of your screen to where we talk about alpha-synuclein and its connection with Parkinson's disease. However, I will mention it briefly in this episode as it is important that you understand that alpha-synuclein can also be found in the gut. It's also just important to recognize that the inflammation found in the gut with conditions like leaky gut and the problems with microbiome in the gut can actually result in alpha-synuclein aggregation as well. And we're talking about locally in the gut, not in the brain cells as we previously discussed in previous episodes. So there's some uh, theory, I'm not 100% sure how much I would buy into this, but basically leaky gut could potentially lead to alpha-synuclein traveling up to the brain, um, perhaps through the cranial nerve 10 but, or the vagus nerve. I'm not sure. Maybe, it, maybe they're suggesting it's traveling outside of the gut somehow. But regardless, we know alpha-synuclein damages brain cells and we don't want more of that out there, especially not traveling to the brain. So what can we do about it and what does this have to do with Parkinson's or treatment? Well, here's the thing. Current research is looking into treatments of Parkinson's disease through treatment of the microbiome or the bacteria in the gut. As a potential treatment for Parkinson's, there is some promising results in this area, mainly with probiotics, prebiotics, as well as fecal implantation. That's something I want to touch on briefly. So fecal transplant is also known as fecal microbiota transplantation, or FMT. FMT is a relatively new thing that they've been trying in the last decade or so. And what it involves is taking a normal person's, or I guess, i.e. a person without Parkinson's, their fecal material and transplanting it into the gut of a person with Parkinson's disease. The whole idea is to restore the balance of 
natural gut microflora or microbacteria in order to to have them have a more healthy environment to live in or I guess rather the bacteria will have make the gut a more healthy environment and decrease some of the problems we alluded to earlier. These are still in really early exploratory phases and nothing is really solidified yet but there have been I think some limited results in this. It's probably an ongoing area of research that we can't really say whether it will make a huge difference at this point but it's a very intriguing area now, for those of you wondering, how in the world are they putting someone else's poop inside of your gut? Well, essentially, it's like a nasogastric tube that is inserted in the nose and swallowed, and that um, stays in the person for a period of time while the fecal material from the donor is being entered, uh, is being fed through that tube uh, over several days period, let's say. If you want to know about someone's real experience with this, I'd highly recommend you check out Anders Linus' channel. And uh, he uh, did a video where he tried this himself. And I'll link that up above if I can find it. Uh, for those of you watching on YouTube, that's going to be a really interesting video because um, he actually teamed up with a professor. I forget now. But anyway, whoever, whoever the researcher was, was helping him to, um, to try this treatment out for himself um, and I think you'd be interested to see what his experience was and potential results uh, but to my knowledge anecdotally I don't believe it had a whole lot of effect for him at least not that he could see tangibly in the context of the video that he made about it. Now fecal transplantation aside which still kind of gives me the willies to say out loud prebiotics and probiotics are something that certainly is available uh, on the market as supplements I'll try to link some in the descriptions below so you can check those out and decide for yourself. The good thing too about pro prebiotics, for example, uh, and, and even in some cases probiotics, can be found in natural sources. For example, kimchi, uh, which is fermented cabbage, that's a delicacy in Korea, it actually tends to be a very good natural probiotic. Also, for those of you who are kombucha fans, that also could be a potential source as well. So long and the short of it is, stay tuned. This is an ongoing area of research. It's something that could potentially help you in the future. And even before that research is, is uh, up and coming, I would go ahead and look into prebiotics and probiotics to go ahead and start working on that gut health and do as much research as you can in ways to improve your gut health so that that bacteria that is naturally found in your gut can continue to be healthy and thrive so that it supports you in your treatment of Parkinson's with other means. So the key thing to remember here is that the gut microbiome may hold some secrets to potential treatments in the future and that's something that I look forward to hearing and learning more about. And I look forward to hearing from you and your experiences as well. And I know that I will. And that's the bottom line. The bottom line. I didn't say that out loud, did I? Well, as you know, here on the Parkinson's Disease Education Podcast, our puns are always intended. Thanks for being here. Hope you found this helpful. Be sure to check out our, our sponsors in the description below. Give them a little bit of love, especially Comfort Lemon, which automatically gets you 15% off anytime you use the link below. Thanks so much for being here. Look forward to seeing you in the next episode. As always, be empowered. Catch you later.